Hi friends, my name is Jess and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Books Past Bedtime. Today I'm going to give you some book recommendations for meeting your Goodreads goal. On this list are 10 queer romance novellas that are all like under 250 pages that'll be super quick to read, super fun, and get you on your way to your Goodreads goal if you're a little bit behind. And because you probably have some reading to do, let's just go ahead and hop right into the recommendations. So the first book on my list is The Alpha's Warlock by Elliot Grayson. This is a 204 page novella and it is on KU. It is a a male male shifter romance. Nate Hawthorne is a warlock and he's been cursed so his magic has been left unstable and his life is in danger. The only solution to fix his magic is to mate bond a werewolf. The best werewolf for the job is Ian Armitage. Ian never intended to take Nate as his, as his mate even though he has honestly had a crush on him forever but Nate and Ian kind of have a antagonistic relationship but Ian has to take Nate for his mate in order to protect his pack because a werewolf or a warlock with volatile magic around his pack is not a good combination. Their mating arrangement definitely has nothing to do with love and never will but of course they fall in love. <laughs> this book is super cute and fun and honestly this whole series is pretty cute and fun and it's it's pretty short so if you want like a fun like fantasy shifter romance series to binge this is a good one and they're all like super short most of them are under 250 pages most of them are around the 200 page mark so they are perfect for flying through and checking off books for your goodreads goal next on my list is a little light mischief by cat sebastian this is a female female regency romance novella it is 107 pages and so it is super quick and easy to get through in it we're following our main character molly Molly is a lady's maid with a bit of a penchant for crime. She might be a thief, a cheat, she's might, she may have stabbed a few people, <laughs> but now she's done with all that. She's putting that in her past. She's determined to keep her hands to herself, so she really shouldn't be tempted to seduce her employer's prim and proper companion, Alice, but how can she resist when Alice can't seem to keep her eyes off of Molly? <laughs> this is another super cute, super light fun romance. I really love this one, especially if you're in the mood for something historical and something sapphic. I believe um, I actually listened to this one on audio, maybe via Scribd or Libby or Hoopla, so I would check there too for this one if you're an audiobook listener. Next on my list is Claimed by the Orc Prince by Lionel Hart. This is a really goofy, campy orc and elf romance and it was super cute. I thought it was really fun. Um, It's 167 pages and it's on KU. I believe this is also a trilogy but this I've only read the first book and the first book ends in like an HEA so you don't really need to read the series but the rest of the series I believe is equally short so if you need a three book thing this could work for you. <laughs> but this first book is following Prince Tegan and he's been prepared from childhood to fight and lead armies against invading orc forces and orcs and elves have been enemies forever for all of time but now orcs and elves have come to a bit of a peace treaty and so in order to cement that peace treaty of course there's an arranged marriage. So now Prince Tegan will be marrying Zorvet the Relentless, who is the third son of Roll Bonebreaker, leader of the Orc clans. And these two are complete strangers. The first words they speak to one another are their wedding vows. And with like endless years of history of combat between the two groups, how can Tegan and Zorvet ever fall in love or have a true marriage. They will, of course. <laughs> this was super cute. It's super quick, super fun, and like I mentioned, campy. I did think the fantasy world was really well done though for how short this book was, Um, and it's definitely a good one if you like orcs and elves. I know that's up a lot of people's alley and I thought it was so fun and I picked this one up originally because I love an arranged marriage trope and this definitely fulfilled my desire for that trope so if you're like me and love an arranged marriage trope I think you would also like this book. Next on my list is Wherever Is Your Heart by Anita Kelly. I think this is another book that's kind of like a companion to two other books that are also really short but I've only read this one so I can only really truly recommend this one but if you're interested you can look into the other books in this like little novella series by Anita Kelly. Kelly. This is 95 pages and I believe it's free on Anita's website. Don't quote me on that. I'll try and like find out for sure and link it in the description if it is. This is basically a older lesbian romance and it was super cute. <laughs> in it we're following our main character June who has been going to Mooney's a like gay bar for a number of years with the sole purpose of pining after the bartender Mal and it's finally time for June to make her move. It is pride week and if she can't ask Mal out on the gayest week of the year. She doesn't deserve her anyway. So she finally gets up the courage to ask her out and you just have to read to see what happens. <laughs> 
this was really cute. I have not read a lot of romances with older characters and some people are looking for that a lot so I definitely would recommend this one. It's like two butch lesbians who are like in their middle ages. <laughs> But it was really cute and sweet and definitely super short and I really liked it and I definitely think you would as well. Another super cute, this one is historical romance I want to recommend is Tommy Cabot Was Here by Cat Sebastian. This is 102 pages and I believe you can find this one floating around on the internet as well. I think that's how I found it. <laughs> this book is set in Massachusetts in 1959 and is basically a second chance romance between childhood friends. The story follows Everett and Tommy. They're reintroduced after 15 years apart. They were previously best friends but Everett walked out of Tommy's life when Tommy got married and Tommy still really doesn't know why. Surprise surprise it's because Everett was totally in love with Tommy and kind of felt betrayed by him getting married and never realizing that Everett had feelings for him. And now 15 years later they're still drawn to one another. They come back into contact because Tommy is a professor for or because Everett is a professor for Tommy's son. So that's kind of how they meet and they live in the same town now. And Everett really like doesn't want to let Tommy back into his life because he was really hurt by him so much in the past. But they just have this like magnetic pull to one another and so he has to kind of figure out if he wants to keep the walls around his heart or if he wants to let Tommy in again and maybe this time I'll be different. This book took me by surprise. I usually don't have like tons of emotions about novellas just because a lot of the time it's not like enough time, enough pages, like enough like world building, character building, character growth to like really truly become attached to the characters in their situation. This book was different though. I fell in love with this book. I thought it was so beautiful. The pining and the yearning between Everett and Tommy was lovely and the way that the like tension built up between them was so like unbearable in the best possible way. I really loved their romance. I thought it was so sweet and I really liked the history and how they learned to communicate and work through it. I don't know it was really really good like this might be my favorite one on the list and the one I would recommend the most and it's also only 100 pages so it's super short but it is like such a good read. Even if you don't need to meet your Goodreads goal like this is just such a good read in general. Next on my list is The Anonymous Hookup by Jax Calder. This is 130 pages and on KU. In this book we're following our main character Lane and Lane is trying to get over a breakup and so his best friend recommends the best way to get over someone is to get under someone else. <laughs> and Lane is very much kind of like a hopeless romantic so he doesn't really do hookups um, so this is kind of proving a problem, but he's determined and so he decides he's going to have a completely anonymous hookup. No like strings attached at all, no names exchanged even, nothing. But he's not really counting on the person he hooks up with to like be, to have like explosive chemistry with that person. Um, and he does uh, with this guy. Still he's like no names, this is a one-time thing, even if it was like the time of my life we're not going to meet again. But fate has other ideas and they continue to like run into each other across town. Finally they're like okay maybe we can continue to hook up but they still don't exchange names and so it becomes this whole thing um, but then they really like start to fall in love with one another and it was really cute. <laughs> I really liked this one. This was another one that surprised me. I think last year I downloaded it um, because it was short to try and meet my Goodreads goal. I, I didn't end up meeting my Goodreads goal last year but I already done it this year even though I cheated and lowered it. <laughs> Anyway, we're not talking about me. This book was really good. I really enjoyed it and I thought it was so fun and cute and it was just like a light fluffy read. And the best part about this book is the relationship between Lane's mom and his new boyfriend. <laughs> There's like this funny reveal. I, I don't know. I really liked this one. I thought it was really good. Next on my list is The Hellions Waltz by Olivia Waite. This book is 195 pages and it's on KU. This is another sapphic historical regency romance and I really enjoyed this one a lot as well. In this book we're following our main character Sophie and there's nothing Sophie hates more than a swindler. After her family lost their piano shop to a con man, they're trying to start fresh in a new town and because of her suspicions of swindling and wanting to protect people, she becomes suspicious of this woman named Maddie Crew, whose stunning beauty doesn't hide the fact that she is up to something nefarious. On the other hand, Maddie Crew just needs one big heist to popper properly fund the Weavers Union forever um, and she's found her mark in Mr. Giles who is a greedy draper and he is really a bad guy so Maddie's doing a good thing. <laughs> for the people by ruining him but Sophie doesn't know this and so Sophie is sticking her nose into Maddie's business and Maddie wants nothing to do with this but if Sophie refuses to quit sticking her nose where it doesn't belong Maddie must recruit her for the cause basically and so she wins Sophie over and they start working together and they start falling in love and it was super cute I really liked this book a lot it's got a like fun mystery heist plot to it which makes it like super 
quick snappy punchy read with the like romance between Sophie and Maddie in the background. I particularly really liked this one because the romance between Sophie and Maddie isn't really like a thing. Like I feel like in a lot of historical romances they make a big deal about the characters being queer or like they have to be secretive and yeah, blah blah blah. But in this book um, Sophie and Maddie are open with their family. It's really not like a big thing to be attracted to women which I liked it was just like a casual uh like a level of like casual queerness that sometimes I like in a um historical like I think both are needed and both are good like it's good to read about like maybe more historically accurate queerness but it's also really fun to read like a light and fluffy Regency romance that doesn't have homophobia in it <laughs> you know so that was one of the reasons I really liked this one so if you're looking for something like that this one's a great one next on my list is The King's Delight by Sarah Honey other than the Alpha Warlock which is like ABO so it has nodding it's kind of kinky this one's also um a little bit more on the kinky smutty side than some of the other ones but I really liked it I thought it was so much fun it's 216 pages and it's on KU and it we're following King Leopold he's known for being handsome intelligent and charming and he rules his kingdom well his people like him and the neighboring kingdoms are very eager to provide him with a princess to marry but King Leo doesn't really want to marry a princess so he's putting it off on the other hand our love interest Felix he left the king kingdom as a teenager to train as a groom and so he doesn't really know King Leo Leo on site but as an adult he has come home um, and he has taken a position as a royal groom where he hopes he'll have plenty of opportunities for a roll in the hay. <laughs> And one day when Felix mistakes Leo for a horse thief, shenanigans ensue. He attempts to seduce Leo, not knowing that he is the literal king of the country. But Leo is delighted by this irreverent groom and sparks fly between them. Their arrangement is all fun and games, right until they both fall really hard for one another. But there's no way their arrangement can last because of who they are to each other. So, so it's really good. It involves spanking, if that's something you're into. <laughs> Which I am sometimes, you know. I really liked this one. It's cute and smutty, fluffy and fun. And it's kind of, I would say it's fantasy, but without magic. So I like it. It was really good. Next on my list is Unnatural by Alessandra Hazard. This is 208 pages and on KU. This is another one that's a series and most of them are short and quick to get through. So if you like this one, you will probably like more in the series. Although this one is my favorite in the series and this is the first one. Basically, this is a ABO shifter sci-fi <laughs> which sounds insane it is but it's not really high sci-fi it's mostly just a shifter romance you know but it's really good and like if you like shifter romances I feel like this is a really good one like particularly the like scent marking in this one was something I was really into so <laughs> that sparks your fancy this is up your alley probably so the kingdom of Pelugia and the Republic of Kadar have always been at war, but they have struck up a peace treaty. Of course, this peace treaty involves a political arranged marriage, which is how I find most of these books because I love an arranged marriage trope. I should make a video about that. I don't know if I have enough to recommend though because most of them are not that good, but this one is good. <laughs> Roy Slughorn who is like the um, senator of Kadar and Prince Hayden of Pelugia. They're arranged to be married. This is a disaster of a marriage from the start because they are both alphas and two alphas have never been known to have a successful relationship with one another. I believe Royce is masquerading as a beta for political reasons so they're not they don't know that they're both alphas when they're arranged to be married but Royce is very very much an alpha and <laughs> in this relationship finds himself becoming like a primitive alpha cliche intent on doing anything to Mark's territory um and Hayden really isn't supposed to create his alpha husband as an alpha himself but bearing his throat to him feels so good <laughs> so goofy like it's so stupid and so unserious but I love it <laughs> like I I just I've reread this book a couple of times because I just really like it a lot you know like it's just fun it's just a fun time okay and it's short if you're looking for something to read really quick to meet your good goal before the end of the year this is one I would recommend to you <laughs> All right, and last but not least, because this is a holiday video, I had to include a holiday book on this list. This is my favorite, like, Christmas romance novella, I believe, that I read last year, so I'm including this one on the list, and it's called Merry Cherry Christmas by Kira Andrews. Kira Andrews is one of my favorite, um, like, KU romance authors. I think she's such a great author. She creates such great characters, puts them in such great situations, writes really good banter, writes just really good, like, chemistry character interactions. So yeah, I really love her. Recommend everything 
everything she's written. I'm sure she's written other shorter things too that you can read, but this is my favorite like Christmas romance novella. So it's 224 pages and on KU and it's basically like a jock nerd virgin story. <laughs> Jeremy is having a hard time his freshman year of college. After coming out, um, his parents like have barely talked to him. So that's not a good situation and that makes him sad. He hasn't made a lot of friends his freshman year. He's kind of nerdy, kind of quiet, and he's about to spend Christmas completely alone in a storm, which is horrible and very sad. So Jeremy clearly needs a fairy godfather. So football captain Max takes him under his wing in order to help him find his dating groove. But Jeremy is wound way too tight <laughs> and he's too vulnerable and Max just cannot entrust him to a random guy. <laughs> Obviously Max needs to take care of Jeremy himself and introduce him to some no pressure exploration. Max is definitely not falling for Jeremy and Max is definitely not inviting Jeremy home to spend the holidays with him. There's no way. Uh, but of course Max is very much falling for Jeremy. The like pining and yearning in this book is so good and I just really loved how protective Max was of Jeremy. Their relationship dynamic was so cute and I really like Max taking Jeremy home to his family. I believe he has like a, a like a Christmas tree farm or like a maple syrup farm or like something really cute and holiday-ish and um, Max's parents are just so cute and are very accepting of Jeremy and so like the like chosen family aspect of this book was super cute as well and it was just very like cozy warm holiday fun romance and I really loved it. So there you have it. Those are my 10 favorite romance novellas that I would recommend that would be quick and easy to read in order to meet your Goodreads goal before the end of the year. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and found some useful recommendations to add to your TBR. If you did and you're not already subscribed, I would love if you would subscribe and stick around on my channel. I would very much appreciate that. Um, also, if you did get any recommendations for this video, I always link the books I talk about in the description down below. These are Amazon affiliate links if they're Amazon. They're Amazon affiliate links. <laughs> so I earn a tiny commission at no extra cost to you if you purchase through my links. Of course, no expectation there. They're just there if you want them. Also, like if some of the books I can find for free online, I'm going to link them in the description as well. Those won't be affiliate links. They'll just be free. But that just depends on what I can find. And the books that are on KU that I mentioned, I like link the KU link for you. So I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> If you want to help my channel out for free, if you don't want to purchase anything, totally fine. You can just give it a like or leave me a comment down below. Anything you want to say, you can tell me how your day is. You can tell me your plans for the holidays. You can tell me if you hate the holidays. Um, you can tell me if you have read and loved any of these books, if you're going to read any of these books, if I should read any romance novellas before the end of the year. Let me know. Talk to me in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Um, if you would like to follow me on social media, any other platform, those links are in the description as always. And I believe I have rambled enough. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.